was to produce a positive alternative, not just oppose the government, but produce a scheme in, in, in opposition. And that's what they did. This was their scheme for um, redeveloping the area where, uh, where, where, where necessary. This is a textbook case of resident action. Um, and they brought in, of course, the council in due course, and they brought in outside bodies. And I just figured my slight indulgence here, um, but these two divides had what was then called the Public Services Committee, which was involved in public issues. Now today, I think it's a totally self-centered. They get no, they only kind of public with some of the income of income of but at that time, they were very concerned in major planning issues in the world. And here's this meeting taking place, and for those who know it, it's such fascinating to see these names, apart from my own, Neil Curran, Daryl Jackson, uh, and uh, was, were, 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 were major architects, uh, from major architects, Gary Gardner, from Daryl Jackson, uh, not so important then, but now they're sort of famous, famous names, uh, Robin Edwards, who became a landscaper, John Janicki was the secretary of the two architects, Andrew McCutcheon became the Minister of Public Works, who became government, George Tibbetts was the leading architect historian, who really introduced the academic basis for challenging some information. He really was his text, he created this whole discipline of urban studies uh, in Australia. And the Poor Housing Commission, confronting the middle classes like this, must have not known what hit I mean, I mean, they were, they believed what they were doing, they were old-fashioned government men and so on, and they were stuck by this alliance of mobile middle-class action, um, which... Uh, or did I may say, uh, if you excuse the interruption, of course, yeah. by the much maligned, uh, correctly in some cases, Builders Labourers Federation, which, had, yeah, 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 which yeah. had a blind squad, which it would send to prevent demolitions. Yes, yes. They came in just a bit after the beginning of the action, inspired by the Green Bands of Jack Mundy in New South Wales, and they were critical. Um, and when the National Trust formed the alliance with Lord Gallagher, the horror in the mind of that sort of spaces of the trade in the 80s was, was apparent, but nevertheless, it was very effective. It brought all these people together. Um, this body here met again the nation of the 1970s because this battle continued. Um, what happened was that Handel Shoes, one of the occupants of the land here, with the other residents, brought an action to restrain the Commission from making it, declaring it a reclamation area. Um, once it was declared a reclamation area and went to Cabinet, there was no means of challenging it. So Mr. Justice Newton gave an uh, injunction to restrain them from making that resolution, um, and it remained in limbo for about seven years. Um, and meanwhile, um, alternatives were put up, and finally, uh, the Commission backed up. Um, so after seven years, um, Essentially, what the residents have proposed was, was done. It's, um, it's these are the same, same pattern. It's an aside, an interesting aside to me. Going around the other day up Allen Street, I found these houses here, which were very charming, but I was struck by the fact that the woodwork of the verandas was quite distinctive. I'm not used to these little drops here being pointed squares. See the top there? This is what I'm more used to. In the real part of Detroit, this is what you find in old houses. And I couldn't understand why there were so many of these square rooms uh, in the Brooks Crescent area. And of course, pretty obvious if you thought about it, this is all the stuff that's been rebuilt by the Housing Commission, attempt to restore, in a slightly crude way, all those verandas were new Housing Commission built restoration verandas. Um, that's the legacy of this development today. <coughs> the final note of this protection was this. The Barricaded Eastern Freeway. Now, today we think of this sort of thing, overturned cars and so on, as what they do in Thailand when they're trying to bring down the regime taxing civil law. Um, there aren't many cases in Australia where this sort of radical action has been taken, has taken place. And it wasn't done by the old middle class activists who deposed the Housing Commission, it was done by the new Monash University educated left wing people. And it was very dramatic. But I would say the difference was that the Eastern Freeway got built, the Housing Commission was abolished. Uh, senior public servants were put out to grass, uh, major schemes were stopped, and the middle classes conquered completely, whereas this, of course, the radicals lost. And that's where I'll 